Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Good day everyone. Uh, my name is Rabi Hassan from the Department of Business Administration. I'm going to take you on Model 5, uh, EEP 3201 uh, and EEP 4201, uh, Management of Innovation. Okay, uh, model five, management of innovation. Uh, you know, uh, managing innovation is, is very important, you know, part of you know, managing modern businesses. Why? Because in the age of digital transformation, you know, organizations are faced with need to innovate more and more, more quickly than before. Digital transformation, you know, have been, you know, happening almost all the industry like for example in the hospital e-commerce and banking training what have you almost all the all the industries are, are, are transforming you know going online and using digital method to carry out their operations like for example hospital you know they have online booking for doctors and what have you uh, you can you can you can do virtually everything online except maybe seeing the doctor and then you know uh, e-commerce platform you know are, are all over around you know disrupting the traditional you know distribution you know system and then we have you know uh, digital transformation in banking you know some years back if you want to uh, withdraw money or make transaction you have to go to the banking board but now you can do everything at the comfort of your home now i can't remember the last time i go to bank you know i only go to bank when my card expires because I have all the all the platforms you know, to, to carry out my transaction, make payments to buy whatever I want to buy anywhere in the world. And then you know training, you know, you know most school, most universities, colleges, you know, are using online platform to reach out to their students. You know, more especially now that we are facing you know pandemic issues, you know globally, you know technology is is, is helping you know in digitizing the teaching method in most of the schools. Like for example, this lecture we are having right now, you know, it's part of it, you know, because of digital transformation. Ordinarily, you know, five years ago, nobody thought about this, but now here we are. So because of these kind of changes, you know, organization need to innovate more and innovate quickly. Why? Because there's competition in the market. You fail to innovate, somebody can, can do and take over your business. You know, a lot of things are happening in, in, in virtually almost all the industry. You know, disruption are happening. You know, all those companies that failed to innovate, you know, are, are being, you know, resurfaced by very innovative companies. So innovation drives business growth and help organizations stay ahead of their competitions. So if as a business person, you can deploy, uh, you can use, uh, your, you can innovate effectively, you can be able to, to stay ahead of the competition, you understand? Because you can you can create new products and services, you can create or device new method of production that will result in lower cost of production and faster, you understand? And you know, technology is, is, is helping businesses to reduce cost and you know manage their time effectively. And even if yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of cost. Because there is a prediction some years to come, you know, no, large number of employees are going to be replaced by machines, which are more effective, more accurate than people, which are bound to, you know, produce, uh, 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 let organization achieve, you know, mark, mark, maximum efficiency. So innovation management has been generating new business models and create new products and services and technologies designed for the changing market. So very innovative, you know, organization, you know, can be able to generate, you know, new model of doing it business. A very cheaper and efficient model. And maybe as a result, you know, new products and services can be able to be created. 
like what is happening in the financial institution uh, uh, industry in, 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 uh, in Nigeria, you know, a lot of product and services have been created on, on a daily basis. You know, product and services that are making life easier for everyone and are making, you know, the, the, the financial institution, you know, to, to achieve maximum, you know, profitability. So proper innovation management also boosts customer satisfaction and employee engagement. So if an organization will properly manage their innovation, you know, in a very, uh, very, very good and, you know, better way, you know, they can be able to, you know, increase their customer satisfaction and employee engagement. Because there are a lot of you know evolving ways, you know, efficient way of doing things in the organization, you know, which are giving rise to the ability of the organization to create more product and services, more enhanced product and services, which gives you know maximum satisfaction to their customers. At the same time, you know, engage their employee, you know, doing you know something new and different. So this model is designed to expose the student. And explain vividly what innovation is all about. The model will also examine the essence of managing innovation and change the realization of organizational goals. So the model is going to be very important as this is the most important aspect of you know managing modern organization, you know, managing innovation, because innovation, new technological, you know, advancement and what have you are uh, uh, you can't do without them. Whether you like it or not, these things will happen in your business uh, operating environment. So you have to be able to know how you can manage your innovation effectively to achieve maximum you know, success. So what is this innovation? You know, we have a lot of definitions here. Innovation is the process of taking new ideas effectively and productively through to satisfy customers. Taking new ideas effectively you know, it's a process of creating something new and then, you know, making an effort to, to, to practically bring it into, in, into, into existence and take advantage of it. So it's a process of, you know, taking new ideas effectively and probably to satisfy customers. Another one says innovation is a successful exploration of new ideas, exploration of new ideas, to use new ideas that, you know, maybe uh, uh, no one have ever thought of. You know, you know what ideas do to people. When you have an idea, you can be able to, to create new product, new services, new things out of it. So health organization to develop new products and services and better way of you know satisfying their customers. Innovation is the process of creating commercial product from an invention. You know what happens in the laboratories, you know, are called uh is called invention. You know, invention in most situations, uh uh, is being created by by scientists, you know, researchers, scholars, and what have you. But entrepreneurs are the ones who commercialize this kind of invention. So, create, uh, innovation is a process of you know creating you know new product, commercial product from an invention. You know, your ability to transform the new invention into commercially usable usable product in the market is called innovation. You might not be the person that invented the product, but being an entrepreneur, you can be able to commercialize it, to mass produce it and you know, bring it into the market, to refine it, mass produce it and bring it into the market. And you are in business, making a lot of money. So innovation is a means by which people exploit change as an opportunity. You know, there are a lot of changes that are happening in virtually every angle, like technological changes. You know, technology is bringing you know, a lot of, you know, opportunities for business to create new means, new product, new services, and what have you. So innovation is a means for which people display change as an opportunity. So those kind of changes that normally come with changes in technology, change in new government policies, you know, change in, in customer awareness and what have you, you know, are opening up an opportunity for organization to innovate, to create new product, to create new service, and to, to, to develop, to, 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 to make their process better and better. So as to achieve, you know, minimal cost of production, which will result in higher profitability. So sources of innovation. You know, in this innovation, you know, according to uh, Peter Draka, 
uh, no, Sean Peter, sorry. You know, there are seven sources of innovation. You know, we have unexpected occurrences, incongruities, process need, change in the industry or market, demographic changes, change in perception and new knowledge. You know, according to this photo, you know, the, the, the first three are within, you know, are within the, 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 the business or the, the entrepreneur, you know, environment. And these four are within his, you know, operating, you know, operating uh, industry. You understand? So we are going to see one after the order. So change, change, or unexpected change. You know, unexpected change, you know, the marketplace is number one area to look for opportunities. Is particular product or service greater or lesser demand than anticipated? You know, sometimes, you know, things or opportunity do open up in the market unexpectedly. And in the process, you know, it gives someone an opportunity to innovate, to create new product or service out of that. So this normally happens when you focus your attention on the market gap. Is there a product or service that is that is that is not there in the market or is on the on the on the supply in the market or is there a need in the market that nobody is 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 is, is, is taking care of so that you can create new product or service so sometimes you know this kind of unexpected occurrences you know happen unexpectedly and as times as an entrepreneur you need to make an you know uh a kind of uh, intentional purposeful search for, for for all those you know opportunities so that you can be able to to create new product or service to satisfy this need or want in the marketplace. And then we have incongruities. Incongruities, you know, uh, is a kind of a uh, mismatch. When there is a mismatch between what you, you expect, what, what customers you know, need and what you, you think the customers need. So there's going to be a kind of a gap. So that normally gives uh, an opportunity for somebody to, 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 to venture into to, to create something new and satisfy the need. For example, you know, there, there, there are two, uh, there is Facebook and MySpace in the, in the social media, you know, arena. You know, before the, you know, even, even though they started almost at the same time, but you know, people, especially at this part of the world, you know, are more aware of Facebook than MySpace. Why? Because Facebook, you know, understood, you know, their customers, or their, 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 their subscribers, you know, need better than the, the MySpace. You know, they target, you know, young people, they provide a lot of, you know, inbuilt app in their, you know, uh, in, their, in their social media and a lot of things, a lot of, you know, interactive, you know, uh, uh, features that allow people to, to make maximum use of the, of, the, of, the, of the social media platform. And did you know, give it more advantage than the MySpace because they understand their customers more than the, the, the MySpace. So these are what incongruities is trying to say. You know, it's something that will allow you to, to create something, to, to modify your product, to make it better and better, to achieve market, you know, uh, opportunities. And then process need. You know, the process need is about the, your way of doing business. You know, it's your method of doing business, your production method or whatever, is, is, it, is it flawed? Is it having problem? Is there any you know, challenge? Is there any problem? Especially from your customer's point of view. You know, in most situations, you, 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 you can go extra mile to interview your customers to survey them, to find out if there are some challenges. Or even you, within your organization, you can be able to find out about all these challenges. Is there any hindrances that is you know, stopping you from achieving maximum profit? Is there anything that is contributing to higher cost of production in your business? So process need. Process need is a process where you look at your process and see how you can modify it and make it better and better so that it will be, you know, it, 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 it can be able to satisfy your customers effectively. It can be able to fetch you a lot of money in the industry. So this involves you know, identifying your company's process weak spot and correcting or designing them. This source of innovation comes within your existing capability and ways of doing business, not the market. In you, 
you understand? So you look at, the, the, for example, if you have a restaurant that is having, you know, too much people, you know, two uh, people on the queue and what have you, crowded restaurant, what do you do? You, you hire more, more chef, you, you employ more people, or be possible, you know, you know, increase your, your, your restaurant space or create another restaurant nearby. You understand? So that you modify your process to make it better and serve your customer effectively. And then we have change in the industry or market. Change in your industry. Your, your industry and market are in continual, you know, changing. You know, regulation change and some product line, you know, expand while others, you know, go extinct. So all these kind of things, you know, open up a chance for somebody to innovate. You know, some products are becoming, you know, outdated. Some are, are coming up new. So all these, you know, are as a result of, you know, this kind of a change in the industry, you understand. New regulations are, are, are popping up. Like for example, because of the federal government, the regulation of the industrial uh, oil sector, you know, a lot of private individual entrepreneurs are coming up, trying to establish their refineries in Nigeria because of the change in the industry. So because of this kind of a changes, you know, entrepreneurs can be able to spot the need for them to come in with their new product or service or modify product or service in the industry or market. And then we have demographic changes, you know, changes in the population, in the income levels, in the human capital, you know, education, age distribution and what have you, you know, are bringing a lot of changes, uh, opportunities for business people to, to capitalize. Like for example, change in education is changing people's rationality, is changing people's perception, you know, and, and this means, you know, people going after quality, very efficient products and services. So all these kind of changes, you know, are opening up chance for people to innovate, to create new products or services. And smart companies, you know, are paying attention to this kind of changes. Example is uh, 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 this kind of changes can cause uh, change in, in the consumers, in the consumer con consumer, you know, behavior and what have you. That will give a company chance to innovate. You understand? And then change in perception. You know, change in perception is another factor that you know allows someone to innovate, or is a source that gives. Uh, entrepreneurs a chance to innovate. You know, because of such perception, you know, a lot of people, you know, are, are changing. They are, you know, purchasing behavior and what have you. Like, for example, in some years back, you know, you, you could be able to see a lot of people smoking anyhow, anywhere. But now you hardly see someone smoking. Why? Because people, you know, perceive the effect of uh, smoking cigarette. And what, what, what happened? You know, the, the, the smoke, the tobacco industry, you know, responded by creating, you know, similar, you know, similar products in a very smart way, like e-cigarettes, like shisha, and all this kind of thing, you know, are as a result of this kind of a position. You know, people are no longer taking tobacco, but these companies say, no, nobody can control out of business. We need to, we must find a way to, to, to continue, you know, surviving. So they came up with a new product based on people's perception. You understand? Like, you know, most female and, you know, all people, you know, they always want to look young. And, you know, a lot of companies are responding to this by producing products that will help people to look younger and younger, especially in the cosmetics industry. You know, we see, we see, we see changes uh, in, in, in religion. Like, for example, Islam. Islam is increasing rapidly all over and a lot of companies are responding to this kind of changes you know you see a lot, a lot of halal restaurant halal drink halal food i like this and that these are happening because people are transforming and the companies and organization cannot afford to lose this this large number of people so they responded by producing by providing a, a product that go along with these people new perception new changes and what have you and then lastly, we have new knowledge, you know, from uh, technology, from uh, new discoveries and what have you, you know, uh, uh, giving chance for people to create new products and services. Like for example, Tesla have disrupted, you know, automobile industry, even though they, they, there are a lot of other companies, but they, 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 they disrupted the company. Now almost 
you know, all companies are trying to, you know, transform, you know, to change their production, uh, their, their products into uh, electric vehicle and what have you. So a lot of, you know, similar kind of change, uh, product are, are coming up and a lot of things are happening. There is miracle drugs from the health, you know, industry, you know, a lot of things are, are coming from new knowledge, new discovery and what have you. So all these are areas where an entrepreneur should focus his attention on so that he can be able to spot a chance for him to innovate. So you don't, you don't look at a single source, you look at them all so that you can be able to, to innovate from all angles. So a lot, a lot of things are, are happening uh, from this angle, and this is all we can take on sales of innovation. So, so, so as a rider, you know, our open, our innovativeness depends lies on our technological knowledge as well as on our mental model. You know, even though there are a lot of companies, uh, countries that you know got independence at the same time with Nigeria like you know malaysia india and all these countries but if you look at the, the, the companies you know the, rela the relation to all this country they have gone far ahead you understand even though nigeria have all the chance to be better than all of these countries we have the resources we have the human capital and what have you but still we are we are underdeveloped we are developing so so it's based on this this idea i'm trying to see you know, your, your innovativeness, you know, depends less on your technology or knowledge as well, but on your mental model. It's all about attitude and change. When your mindset is not about all this kind of uh, a thing, regardless of your resources, regardless of what uh, your exposure, you cannot be able to bring about those changes. So it has to be based on your, you know, mental uh, 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 model. So this is because our unique construct system or mental framework is that pushing hopefully effect on all other ideas and experience we encounter. You know, because of this kind of, uh, you know, you know, mindset, you know, regardless, no matter what you come, or you come across in your life, you cannot be able to, to make meaning out of it. You cannot be able to turn it into something. Our leaders travel, you know, worldwide, they go places, they, they see a lot of things, they see how leaders are making things happening in their country, transforming their countries, but still nobody can do anything here. You understand? So therefore, creating innovative society is to a large degree a function of what do not change. So not only you know education, not only technology, we need to change our attitude to be able to, to innovate, to be able to, to see opportunity for innovation, to be able to innovate a lot of forward and services and transform our country. So element of innovation, you know, what are the things that needs to be need to be there for an innovation to, to, to occur? So first of all, there is need for a challenge. What is the what is the problem? What are you trying to, to, to solve? What is it that is necessitating the need for the change? The challenge. So there must be a challenge. There must be something that you need to transform. Understand if, for example, uh, the market you are targeting or you are residing or you are operating, you know, is 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 occupied by a lot of you know competitors and other businesses, similar businesses. So what do you do? Maybe you start thinking about going online to reach out to market beyond where you are residing. You understand that is a challenge. You are not making sales in the market. So what do you do? You create another market, or maybe you go to another market, or you go online, or you diversify your money, uh, your business into, into something else, or, or you can even divest and maybe invest in another business. You understand? Challenge. Then customer focus. So the innovation, you know, in most situations should be something that will add value to people. Because any product or service that adds value, that product or service is going to make sales, going to you know get you money in the marketplace. So it must be something that is based on customer focus, that is you know creating to add value to, to customers. And then creativity, generating and sharing ideas, it must be something out of creativity. You know, creativity in most situations is, is a mental work, is is challenging yourself to, to come up with a new product or service with something new. While innovation is your ability to to practically, you know, actualize 
your creativity into practical outcomes, into a product or service which people can use. And then communication, you need to communicate your ideas, your new idea, new knowledge, and what have you, so that you can collaborate with other people, work together to create a very sophisticated or very uh, effective product. And then you need to implement your ideas, you need to learn and share your new ideas, and then you need to build your, your innovation or whatever you based on culture, values, good leadership, and awareness. So these are the elements of uh, innovation. And then forms of innovation, forms of innovation. Forms of innovation. You know, we have types of innovation, we have forms of innovation. You know, forms of innovation uh, uh, is, is going to talk about the form an innovation normally takes. The forms innovation normally takes. So process innovation. Process innovation is the innovation in, in your process of doing your business, of producing, of you know, giving service and what have you. It's called process innovation. How can you modify your process to make it better and better? So that it will result in you know maximum satisfaction to your customers and lower cost to you, the producer. You understand process innovation. So including changes and improvement to methods, this contribute to increase in productivity, which lowers cost and help to increase demand. This can make process simpler, faster, more accurate, more reliable, less expensive, and more integrated. And then we have innovation in product and services innovation in product and services. That is your ability to create new product out of your existing products. Or new service out of your existing services is called innovation in product and services. Or your ability to, to remodel, to, 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 to make your product, existing product better and better. Like what happens to automobiles, like Toyota Corolla. You know, Toyota Corolla over the years, you know, the companies, you know, was able to, move, to, 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 to modify it from something very slow, very ugly to something very sophisticated we have right now in the market. 2020 uh, model Toyota Corolla, something very sophisticated. And that happened out of, you know, continual, in, you know, value increment, uh, incrementation. With each new model, you know, uh, Yearly, you know, a new feature is added. That's how they were able to make it better and better. You know, product innovation. You know, this kind of innovation happens also in service. The way you deliver your service, like for example, Bayern University, you know, gives service to student, teach student. And now Bayern University is trying to transform, to go online, to be able to help their student, you know, learn from their, the comfort of their home. You know, this can help you know minimize a lot of things like congestion, like you know the spaces and what have you. It can it, even more costly, uh, more, more cheap to the student because you don't have to transport yourself to school. You can stay at home and listen to and take your lectures. You understand because of innovation in service, and this this innovation can, can either be incremental or radical. You know, incremental is the kind of innovation that. You, you, you make, you know, by gradually adding more value to your existing product to make it better and better. That is incremental innovation. And then we have, you know, radical innovation. And radical innovation is a process where you stop doing what you are doing or producing and start producing something entirely different, something new, new product or service. This happens, uh, you, know, you know, especially when your existing product is no longer you know, gaining ground in the market. People are no longer buying your existing products, so you may decide to change, to start producing something that people will really need in the marketplace. Or something that is more superior, that is better in terms of, you know, satisfying your customers need and wants. And then we have product uh, innovation in management, in management. You know, this kind of innovation, you know, happens in the way, you know, entrepreneurs, business people, you know, uh, the managers and what have you manage business operation, you understand and what have you. Innovation in management. You know, a lot of things in technology is, is helping, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, to, to use and, you know, easily and effectively manage their business affairs. 
almost every aspect of their business is being you know you know assisted by by technology like recruitment like managing finances and what have you you understand there is a tradition in the future the companies will not will not need the service of accountant because you have all the software to help you you know automate your financial transactions and what have you so a lot of things are, are happening in this respect, you know, innovation and management. And then types of innovation. Types of innovation. These are the, 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 the different, you know, you know, kind of innovation we, may, we have in the world. Like we have breakthrough innovation. Breakthrough innovation is a kind of innovation that normally generate IP right, intellectual property right. Why? Because it, 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 in most situations, the starting point of that uh, kind of innovation in that area. Like for example, prior to the innovation of the computer, there wasn't anything like computer, but somebody invented computer. That was a breakthrough innovation. Nobody have ever ha had ever heard of anything like that and somebody created it. That is a breakthrough innovation. So a good example of breakthrough innovations Ideas are the internet, the automobile, the computer, the airplane, and what have you. And then we have technological innovation. Technological innovation are the kind of innovation that follows breakthrough innovation. Like for example, when the first automobile was produced, was invented, then similar based product, you know, we are we are also created out of the first breakthrough innovation. So we call it technological innovations. Technological innovation offer advancement in the product or market area. Examples of technological innovation are voice and text messaging, the jet airplane, you know, from, from the air airplane, you will be, you be able to create jet airplane, helicopter, you know, and, and all, all this, and a personal computer. From the, from the, 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 the computer they, they invented, initially they were able to create, you know, different kind of computers, PC. You have desktop, you have laptop, you have, you know, farm top, you have a lot of this kind of a thing. The flip watch for containing features and what I mean. So to make an innovation, I kind of innovation that normally follows breakthrough innovation. And then we have ordinary innovation. Ordinary innovation, you know, all like breakthrough and to make an innovation, the ordinary innovation is the one that occurs most frequently. This kind of innovation extended technological innovation into better product or service. This innovation usually comes from market-led or market push innovation. You know, these are uh, ordinary innovation are the kind of innovation we normally see every day in the kind of product and services we consume on a daily basis. You know, the way they, they, they modify their product, the way they add more value, the way they change their product, you know. Like for example, what happens in the in the banking industry in Nigeria, you know, they were able to transform their you know transaction, their methods, and what have you into something better and better. And still there, we are, we, we are being, we are getting a lot of, you know, products, you know, financial based, you know, products from, 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 from this kind of uh, innovation. So these are the type of innovation we are going to take. And then we have theories of innovation. Theories of innovation, we have the efficient theory of innovation. You know, the efficient theory from the, the efficient something from the biology. If you can remember your biology, you know, in your secondary school, there is a diffusion theory of, of something. I can't remember. You know, diffusion, you know, is trying to explain how something, you know, spread. You understand? So one innovation, of course, according to this theory, innovation may be spread from the innovator to other individual groups. However, this process has been proposed that the life cycle of innovation can be described using S cap or the efficient cap. So according to this theory, you know, once innovation happened in like, for example, America, you know, within very short possible time, you know, it will reach all over. That is why when, when, when they discovered the, the cure to the COVID-19, you know, before you know it, it was all, 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 all over because of the efficient theory of innovation. So once you innovate something, you know, so far it is something that is adding, that, that adds, you know, real value, that thing will, it will spread rapidly from the innovators, from the country where the product is, is, is innovated or is invented to other countries in the world. And this process can be explained using this cap. 
you know, if you look at from the beginning of this curve here, you see that this is where the, the innovation start. So this is where it, 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 it started, you know, growing innovators, you know, early adopters, you know, people that adopted the technology and then continue, you know, growing up to here. And then we have decline. So this normally happens if the, the, the entrepreneurs or the, the, the inventors, you know, did not, you know, pro properly manage their innovation. If you refuse to manage your innovation, so it will eventually decline, die out. It will be replaced by, an, by a better you know, technology or innovation. And that's why we have, it, it, it takes a kind of a product life cycle where you start, you know, if you are unable to sustain it, then it, will, it, it dies, it dies out, you understand? And then we have disruptive innovation. Disruptive innovation. Innovation that challenge existing thinking and models for solving problems is called innovative and disruptive innovation. The kind of innovation that takes over an existing innovation is called disruptive innovation. An innovation that creates a new market by applying a different set of value, which ultimately and unexpectedly overtake an existing market is called disruptive innovation. So according to uh, and the author of this theory, uh, I think it's Sean Peter. Yeah, Sean Peter. Sean Peter in 1940, you know, invented, you know, came up with this theory. So according to him, you know, disruptive innovation happens when a new product, you know, replace an existing product in the marketplace because it is more sophisticated, it is more effective, it is more superior in terms of customer satisfaction and what have you. So a good example of disruptive innovation is Netflix. You know, Netflix, you know, you know, was able to disrupt, you know, video rental and video distribution industry twice. Pace with the videotape and disruptive rental industry, where it disrupted, it disrupted, you know, very big companies. They were into video rental and what have you. And then they came up with their online streaming services. Something you know quite similar from the existing practice, you understand. So they were able to disrupt the industry. Now you hardly see place for video rental. Even here, you know, in our local, you know, remote local government and what have you villages, you hardly see video rental because people are using all these online, you know, streaming or downloading our movies. And it also, you know, disrupted you know traditional media companies. You know, a lot of you know companies like Destiny. Who owns you know ESPN, Destiny Channels, you know, Time Warner Bros. Who owns you know CNN, HBO, you know Cinema Max and Fox, you know, Netflix is been you know disrupting their service. You know the focus of customer now is being shift, shifted from the pay per view you know TV subscription to an online uh, satellite uh, uh, services to to to, 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 to the online streaming services. You understand, and that is how Netflix was able to disrupt, you know, this industry. So this is a good example of how disruptive technology or innovation happens in the marketplace. And this can be seen using this curve. You know, if you look at this curve, you know, all these, you know, uh, uh, existing technology in the marketplace, most demanding use, high quality use, medium quality, low quality. But now you have something different something more sophisticated, more superior, and more efficient you know, in the marketplace. Now, replacing all these technologies in the marketplace. This is how it happens. So change and innovation. You know, you know, there is no way you can talk about innovation without talking about change. Because change is what they normally give rise to a chance for someone to innovate. When there's a change, you always make an effort to, to change the way you, re you respond to it in a positive way. And that, that is in most situations an innovation. So change is defined as a transformation in pattern of organizational activity. When an organization is doing, is using like maybe labor intensive, and then, and now, and, and then suddenly it, it changes to uh, maybe capital intensive using machines, technology, and what have you. It's a transformation. Or maybe if 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 organization uh, is is having like hundred employees and now it has 
you know, 50 employees because of a new way or uh, modification to the organization structure. It's a change. Maybe they, 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 they for, for see a chance for them to reduce costs by maybe laying off people to, to match maybe opportunity, uh, responsibility and maybe opposites and what have you so that they will minimize costs and what have you. So change has also been defined as modification of those policies keeping a system behavior stable. So anything that, 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 that you know, stagnates an organization, you know, an ability of an entrepreneur to modify it, to, to be able to allow the organization to progress is a change. Like an employee who is a kind of uh, non unproductive, an employee that is not you know, contributing to the progress of the organization, if you replace that kind of organization, you are modifying the system to make it better. In that situation, a change has happened. Because people are going to see the change, you know, physically in terms of the results the organization is going to yield. And then change can be seen as an overhaul of both internal and external environment of an organization. Overhaul, like the way you do an overhaul to a car. When you do an overhaul, you make it better and better. You, 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 you change all the all the all parts that are, you know, you know, uh, making the car, you know, that slowing down the car. You know, to replace them with something new, a better part. The same thing with an organization. When you overhaul the organization, you change people position, you, you lay people, you employ new people, you, you, you improve this technology, you, you, you collaborate, you understand? And, and you diversify, you do a lot of things to transform your organization. And then no innovation without the readiness to change existing condition. So innovation in most situations, you know, go along with the change. If you are not willing to change, you cannot be able to innovate. And then change alters, modifies, improves, replace, and transform things. That is the nature of change. Whenever you are trying to change, be ready to, to see you know, physical changes in the, in, in the organization. So factors responsible for change. What are the factors that normally you know, open up a chance for, for, for a change to happen? In the organization, we have economic factors such as business cycles, gross margin of products, trends, interest, interest rate, money supply, inflation, unemployment, disposable income, energy availability, and cost. You know, from economic perspective, uh, factors are uh, angle. A change can can happen. You understand? When the money supply you know increases, you know it means you know a lot of products and services in the marketplace. So organization need to respond to that by producing more and more you know, products and services in the market, by modifying their products and services, by you know, creating, a by rolling out different variety of products. Maybe if the organization is into maybe a necessity, organization can go into luxury, best product and what have you, because the money supply has changed. So also the inflation, the unemployment and what have you, all these factors you know, economically you know, you know, bring about change in the organization. And now we have change in technology, which is the most important. Imagine also some technological devices such as thinking computers, robotics, computer engineering, neural drugs, space communication, laser cloning, satellite network fiber, optics, electronic money transfer, etc., have altered the frequency operations of organization. Yes. Because of technological changes, you know, all these kind of things have changed the organization, you know, carry out their, their activity understand and then social or cultural causes for instance there are a lot of changes in the family structure marital life and self dependence also discrimination as much as for minority and majority groups all these have called for change changes in the different type of product or service offered by companies and strategies change in the cultural social cultural you know also you know open up you know give rise to a lot of changes in the organization. Political and legal changes, factors such as monopolistic legislation, environmental protection law, taxation policy, foreign trade regulations, employment law, government stability, and so on. And then intense competition. Competition from you know, you know, your business competitor, people in the same line of business with you. Fierce competition do exist among ventures or businesses that offer similar products or similar services. This normally causes 
uh, causes a business to change its pattern of operation to survive the competition. Because you want to scale ahead, you want to respond to the, the, the fierce competition you are facing in your business environment, you need to change. You need to change the way you, you operate so that you can be able to, 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 to go ahead with the competition in the marketplace. So this can also you know, cause change in the organization. The organization may, may decide to, 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 to modify it product to make it more qualitative. And this may result in changing the source of supply of raw materials, you know, replacing all machines with the new ones, you know, training and retraining the workers on how to operate the new machines and what have you. You know, all this will cause a lot of changes to the organization. It may even entail you know, additional funding to the organization then resistance to change. Then an entrepreneur, you know, needs to, you know, understand, you know, the reason why people, you know, resist change whenever he tries to bring it into the organization. Because uh, for someone to be able to manage his innovation, he has to be able to know how to, what are the, what are the possible, you know, factors that may cause resistance in the organization. So that, when he, when he tries to, to, to innovate, he will try to, you know, you know, take these factors into consideration. You understand? So people in her field resist change due to uh, constancy. Sometimes people resist change if they are not aware of the, the, the possible, you know, outcomes of the change. You understand? Because change in most situations do come along with, you know, some, you know, you know uh, side effects. Like for example, organization that is trying to overhaul its organization or re-engineer its organization or transform may, may, may have some of its employees, you know, lay off. You understand? Or replace or transfer from, from one unit to another or from one branch to another across state or even countries. So all this kind of uncertainty, you know, results in resistance to change and then trade to social and economic status. You know, when somebody you know is enjoying a particular position or status, you know, and perceives a likely you know change in that is economic status as a result of the change, that person may make an effort to resist the change. And poor communication. When you fail to communicate to your employees, to your business partners, and what have you, you know, about the reason for the change, well ahead of time. That may, may, may cause a resistance from them because they may not be aware of the, of, the, of the reason for the change. And then lack of trust, and there is misunderstanding, trust and what have you, will also cause resistance. Lack of, you know, you know, sophistication, you know, knowledge, expertise, and what have you may cause you no know, change to have a problem. And then illiteracy, emotional attachment, or group resistance. You know, at times. A group, especially a level, 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 you know, union, you know, may cause you know resistance of a particular change in the organization. Like for example, the federal government, you know, has been trying to enroll ASU members on IPBIS, but they are they are they are level un, their union, you know, ASU, you know, say no to the IPBIS. And because of that, even though there might be some lecturers that you know want to enroll on, onto the MPBS based on their personal reason, but they will not do that because their group say no to, 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 the, to, to the IPBS. That is how group will know this change. So how do you manage the change? So managing resistance involves education and communication. You know, before you, 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 you introduce change in the organization, you need to have a meeting with members of the organization, your managers, your employees, and try to discuss the reason why you want to bring about change. And maybe try to assure them that this change is not going to cause harm to anybody or affect them. But you, you want to do it, you want to bring it so that you, you overhaul the organization and make it better and better for everybody's benefits. So education and communication is very important. And then participation and involvement. Sometimes if you want to have a kind of a hit free you know, change or innovation in your organization, you need to involve the people that are likely going to be affected in the change. Involve them as a, a part, a partners and, and what have you, you know, so that you, you wouldn't have issues when, when, when implementing the change. And then you, you may have negotiation and agreement, especially with the labor union, labor, yeah, labor or group that resists the change. 
you sit down with them and negotiate based on, you know, at times, you know, I told me, you know, change has economic consequences. Sometimes you may lose your job, you may even uh, lose some significant part of your salary and what have you, or you may, they may reduce your salary. So in that respect, you know, the negotiation needs to be carried out to, to agree on the time and what have you. And then timing of change, you know, change should be implemented at the very right time. Time when people are ready for the change. And then there must be a very good leadership style to be able to convince people to embrace the change. And then there is, you, 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 you may need to, to conduct what they call post field analysis, analysis to, to, to weigh the advantage and disadvantage of the change to find out if the, if the change benefit is going to be more than the, 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 the disadvantage or problem that it may likely cause. So that based on your analysis, you can be able to, 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 to convince yourself or other people you know that the change is, is needed, is inevitable in the organization. So avoiding constraint to innovation in Nigeria. So why, 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 you know, despite our you know economic resources, human capital resources, and what have you, but innovation is, 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 is very slow, very slow in this country. You know, businesses are not innovating, you know, and a lot of things that, you know are causing a lot of you know problem to the country. Like for example, now everybody is, is relating the, the problem of you know foreign exchange to the, the, the federal government, which is not their fault. It's Nigerian fault. Everybody is contributing to this. Why? Because you earn foreign exchange when you produce more goods and services and export them into other countries. That's how you receive foreign exchange. But when your import is higher than what you export, you are likely going to have a deficit foreign exchange. And that is, is, is what can normally, you know, you know, inflate the, the foreign exchange. And that is why, you know, the value of dollars and other foreign countries are higher than the value of uh, Naira by far. Why? Because Nigerians are not producing so many things that, that they don't, that, that other people outside Nigeria can use. You know, everything that we use are, are, is being imported from other countries. So how, how, how should we not have a problem of foreign exchange? It's not from the government. It's not government fault. It's, it's, it's we, even though uh, from one angle, you know, we can relate the problem to the government because of their inability to provide enabling environment and some other, you know, you know uh, interventions that will allow people to produce goods and services that are going to be exported outside. But actually the, the problem lies in, in our inability to produce, you know, a lot of goods and services to export so that our export will be higher than our import. And if that happens, you know, the value of, you know, foreign exchange flowing into the country will be higher than, will be higher than, 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 than its needs. And that will, you know, bring down the value, bring off the value of Naira and bring down the value of, of dollars. That is what will help us to, to reduce the, the, the gap. So, so some factors, you know, that, you know, contribute to this, you know, lack of innovation, uh, high poverty incidents, you know, high poverty incident, especially in, in, in northern part of Nigeria. And then we purchasing power to support private sector growth because of the high poverty incidents, because of, you know, uh, or, or, or high inflation, what have you, you know, or the, our purchasing power is very weak. Your purchasing power is your ability to buy, you know, as much as you want goods or services. So if you are, you know, purchasing power in, in, in normally is, 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 is being eroded by high inflation, high prices of goods and services in the country. If the prices of goods and services are very uh, are high, you know, you are bound to have very weak purchasing power. And that will, you know, you know, affect you in a way that you cannot be able to buy, you know, things and good service, uh, good and service that you want. And then low productivity in sectors. You know, Nigeria is an uncultured economy, even though now, you know, we are, we are seeing, you know, a massive transformation in Nigeria and hopefully things are going to change in the future. You know, the country is diversifying you know, into non-oil you know, sectors and what have you. But before, you know, productivity is mainly in oil sector. And that is not 
you know, helping the country. From a lack of economic diversification, lack of dynamic policies that will help the company, company to diversify, uh, country to diversify into other, you know, uh, products or service services that will help the country to attract a lot of foreign exchange. And then we have poor governance, you know, corruption, you know, you know mismanagement, you know, financial crimes, and what have you, you know, are, are very high in the country. And as a result, you know, the cost of doing business and the ease of doing business is, is very poor in the country. And this is not helping, you know, innovation and creativity in the country and entrepreneurship. That is why we, we have problems in this area. So technical change and management of innovation. So it is a must for entrepreneurs to, to manage and respond optimally to technical change and innovation. So as an entrepreneur, you should always be ready to, 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 to respond to change that may likely you know, you know, appear in your business environment. You understand? You may you, you need to maybe you know update your technical knowledge and what have you so that you respond to the change you know effectively because your failure to respond to these changes may undermine the basis of their venture existence. Somebody can replace you, somebody can take over your business, and you may become you know irrelevant in the marketplace because customer taste and fashion you know are, are changing. You know your product if if, if not modified. Over time, you know, it is going to be forgotten in the marketplace because people will, will move to another product that is, you know, is, is, is modified, is more better than your own. So, accordingly, a four-stage processes which are relevant for managing and responding to technical change and innovation, which by its very nature requires change, is stated as follows. Number one, you know, the first, you know. Uh, process or, or what is needed of you as an entrepreneur who is you know, trying to respond to manage change or innovation should always be scanning your environment to see if there is if there are any signals for for a change you understand and then you need to evaluate the opportunity if there is an opportunity in the environment that will help you to change or to innovate then you try to evaluate it and see if it is worth, you know, giving attention to. This involves deciding which of these signals to respond to. That's on strategic view of how the enterprise can best develop, based on your uh, based on your resources at your disposal. And then you resource acquisition. You try to, you know, acquire the, 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 the relevant resources to be able to to respond to the need for the change. And then technological and market development. This involves implementing the project, developing both technology and market in order to respond effectively to the need for the change. So finally, you know, champions are needed in all walks of life to exert pressure for innovation in productive sectors and drive policy, innovation, and cultural change in our country. So with the combined effort of new generation of entrepreneurs and credible leaders, Nigeria will gain its lost glory. And with new efforts, join the league of Prosperous, uh, prosperous na uh, nation in the world. So this is all we can take on this uh, model. Uh, if there is any question regarding it, you can you know drop your question at the forum. Inshallah, uh, me or any of the participants will respond to it. So thank you for your time. <laughs>